So in today's notes, we're going to take a look at truncated right cones and pyramids. So when the top narrower portion is removed, such that the base of the removed portion is parallel to the existing base, the resulting shape is called a truncated cone or pyramid. So here, over here, we have these top narrower portions removed, and this base is parallel to this base. And then the pyramid, this base, is parallel to that base. So the volume of a truncated cone or pyramid below, so this is your truncated portion, that's equal to the volume of the original or larger cone or pyramid minus the volume of the removed or smaller cone or pyramid. So drawn together, I just want to highlight in these two pictures to the right um, that we have some similar right triangles. So let's start by drawing the altitude in both. Remember the altitude is drawn perpendicular to the base. Okay, um, it meets the altitude right here in this cone. We'll put a dot right here for the altitude of the smaller cone. And then when we trace the slant height in each, you can see that we have two similar right triangles. So let's sketch or trace the slant height and We'll connect that, and we have the two similar right triangles. So all right angles are congruent, and remember this slice is parallel, so we have a pair of corresponding angles right here. So the two triangles are similar by AA. So let's take a look at question number one. Water is in the, cape of a, or in the shape of a cone uh, It has a height of 8 inches and a maximum diameter of 5 inches. So let's draw that cup. So I'm going to draw a nice large cone. It has an altitude, so I'm going to draw the height. An altitude of 8 inches and a maximum diameter of 5, so that means our radius is 2.5. What is the volume of the water in the cup to the nearest tenth of a, of a cubic inch when the cup is filled to half its height? So if it's filled to half of its height, the height of this cone is going to be 4. Okay. Now, because we have uh, within the cones, we have our two similar right triangles, because the altitude's drawn perpendicular, right? And here's our congruent angle. Um, if the height of the larger cone to the smaller cone is a 2 to 1 ratio, then our radii are also going to be in a 2 to 1 ratio. So if you wanted to solve, you could say 8 to 4 equals 2.5 to x within those overlapping right triangles, and we'll get x equal to 1.25. Again, what is the volume of the water in the cup? So the volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. It's right on your reference sheet. So substituting a radius of 1.25 and a height of 4, we end up with 1 third pi times 6.25. Plug that in the calculator and we get 6.544984694. So we're rounding um, to the nearest 
tent. So the volume is approximately 6.5 cubic inches. All right, number two. Find the volume of the truncated pyramid with a square base. I like to draw the top, but you don't have to. So I'm going to sketch the top of this. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. So find the volume of the truncated pyramid. So that's the volume of the larger or the whole pyramid minus the volume of the removed portion. You can also think of it as the volume of the larger pyramid minus the volume of the smaller. Okay? So over here, the larger pyramid, and that's why I like to draw the whole thing or add the top. I don't know this altitude. So I'm going to call that altitude x. To help me find x, I'm just going to highlight grab green, those similar right triangles within. So I'm going to go all the way down for the large one. Now the length of that longer side from here all the way down is going to be x plus 22. I'm going to trace the slant height. Okay, so the base of my triangle is 5. So I have x um, plus 22 to 5, so left side to bottom. And then in this little right triangle, it is telling me that that's a, a 1 there. I'm just writing overneath it. Okay, so then the height would be x to 1. So then when I cross multiply, 5 times x is 5x equals x plus 22. Subtract x, we have 4x equals 22 and then divide by 4, and x is equal to uh, 5 and a half. So then over here, 5.5 plus 22 is 27.5. So now I have the altitude and length, or both heights, of the small and large pyramid. Okay. Once again, that smaller altitude was the x, where the larger altitude was x plus 22. So in the formulas, Volume for a pyramid is one-third capital B times H. Now the base of the larger pyramid, this whole pyramid, if we go back to the top, it tells us it's a square base. So if this is 5, then this distance is going to be 10. So the area of a square would be 10 squared. So one-third capital B times H which is 27 and a half. Then I'm going to cut off the top. Now this square base right here, if the one segment was a 1, then from here to here is 2. So that's I'm going to subtract 1 third of 2 squared times my altitude of 5 and a half. Okay? So plugging this into the calculator, we get 2,750 over 3. Plugging this into the calculator, we get 22 thirds. So the volume of the truncated pyramid, when we subtract, is going to be, it's going to be a third because we keep the denominator, and 2,750 minus 22 is 2,728 cubic meters. All right, I'd like you to pause the video this time and read the next question before I go over it. Uh, it was a regions question. Okay, now I'm going to read it aloud. So a water glass can be modeled by a truncated right cone, a cone which is cut parallel to the base is shown to the right. So here is our water glass. The diameter of the top of the glass is 5 inches. So I'm going to label the 
radius is two and a half inches. And the diameter at the bottom of the glass is four inches. So this is two inches. And I'm gonna also go ahead over here and label this as two and a half inches. And this is two inches. I'm also in the larger picture over here going to highlight the two similar triangles. Remember, the altitude creates a right angle, and the radii are parallel, so we have these two congruent angles there. And the height of the glass is six inches. So the height of the glass right here is six inches. So this segment over here is six inches. The base with a diameter of four must be parallel to the base with a diameter of five inches in order to find the height of the cone. Explain why. Okay, so parallel diameters using the word of the question cut by a height. So just like two parallel lines cut by a transversal, okay, which is a transversal. forms congruent corresponding angles. We could also mention the right angles, um, but in my write-up, I'm going to switch it up and use this reflexive angle right here. So parallel diameter is cut by a height, which is a transversal forms congruent corresponding angles. And the two triangles formed by the diameters, altitudes, and slant height overlap which means they share an angle and any angle is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Therefore, the two overlapping triangles are similar. corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So we had to explain why, okay, a very detailed explanation and how, again, the base of the diameter of four inches must be parallel to the base of the diameter of five inches in order to find the height of the cone. So in order to find the height of the cone, we need similar polygons. Okay, so let's move it down to the bottom. Determine and state in inches the height of the larger cone. So since I don't have room, I'm actually gonna draw those two triangles separately down here. So here's the big right triangle, and that had a radius of 2.5 and a height of x plus 6. And then the little one 
had a radius of 2 and a height of x. So now to set up and solve for x, um, I'm going to do, I'll do left to right. So 2.5 over 2 equals x plus 6 over x. So 2 times x plus 6 distributing, we get 2x plus 12 equals 2.5x. Subtracting the 2x, we get 0.5x. And when we divide 12 by 1 half, we get 24. So find the height of the larger cone. Um, that's the x plus 6. So 24 plus 6 is 30. And then the last part of this question says determine and state to the nearest tenth of a cubic inch the volume of the water glass. So again, that's the volume of the large cone minus the volume of the small cone. So volume is one third of a cone pi r squared h. So I'm going to leave out the r squared and h and then go back up to the picture. And then one third pi r squared h. So in the larger, okay, we have a radius of two and a half, and then we just found the height, because this was our x. And x plus 6, 24 plus 6 is 30. So let's plug in the larger height is 30, and then our radius was 2.5. Now in the smaller cone, we have a radius, that's this cone right here. We have a radius of 2, and x is the height, and that was 24. So 1 third pi times 2 squared times 24. So here, uh, 1 third of 30 is 10 times 2 and a half squared. You get 62.5 pi minus a third of 24 is 8. 8 times 4 is uh, 32 pi. So subtracting, we get 30.5 pi. That's exact, but to the nearest tenth, we have to then go to the calculator, and we get 9.57 it's the nearest tenth. It, the volume of the water glass is 95.8 cubic inches. All right. And now into some density questions. Today we're going to start ba uh, basic uh, with the definition of density. And I know you've seen density in science, so this stuff should be pretty easy. Okay? So on to the next page. Density. Okay. Density is the degree of compactness of a substance. How tightly packed matter is in the amount of mass in a given space. A measure of the mass per unit uh, or volume of a substance. So density is equal to mass over volume. And then if we put this over 1, we can say that mass equals density times volume. Okay, so when we're looking at mass to volume, mass is typically in units such as grams, like grams to cubic centimeters as an example. Um, kilograms we see a lot into cubic feet, so on and so forth. Population density is the population over area. Okay, so how many square mile, for example. So number four, it says a small wooden cube has an edge of five centimeters and a mass of 69.238 grams. Determine the density of the cube to the nearest thousandth. Um, so first, uh, well, we can write down the ratio. The ratio is mass to volume, and the volume of the cube is length times width times height, or 5 by 5 by 5, or 5 cubed, which is 125 cubic 
centimeters. So we're going to take the mass of 69.238 grams and divide it by 125 cubic centimeters. And we get the decimal to be approximately 0 0.544 grams per centimeters cubed. State which type of wood the cube is made of using our density table to the right. So using our answer, we can now see that the type of wood is elm. And the last one, number five. During an experiment, the same type of bacteria is grown in two petri dishes. Petri dish A has a diameter of 44 meters and has approximately 30,000 bacteria after one hour. Petri dish D has a diameter of 71 millimeters and has approximately 68,000 bacteria after one hour. Determine in state which petri dish has the greater population density of bacteria at the end of the first hour. So remember, uh, population density is equal to In this case, it would be the number of bacteria to the area of your Petri dish. So let's compare Petri dish A to B. So the area of the circle in A is pi times r squared. So if the diameter is 44, that means our radius is 22. And here, if our diameter is 71, our radius is 31.5. I'm sorry, 35.5. So now over here, pi times r squared, pi times 22 squared gives us 484 pi. And the area of this dish or circle is pi times 35.5 squared, which is 1260.25 pi. So our population density for A is the number of bacteria. So we have 30,000 bacteria. Divided by the 484 pi, which gives us 19.72. 995162. And then our population for Petri dish B is 68,000. We're going to divide that by the area of the dish of 1260 and a quarter pi. And we get 17.175221. So which Petri dish has the greater population density? Our answer is Petri dish A, as it has the greater population density.